Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how you can morph liquid into any object in Blender using Mantaflow. To get started with this tutorial, we first need to add in the object that we want the fluid to turn into, and you can use whatever object that you want. For this tutorial, I'll be using some text. I'm going to press X and delete the default cube, and then I'll press Shift A and add in some text. I'll rotate this text 90 degrees along the X axis and then change it to, let's just go with blend. From there, I'll scale it up and then place it right in the middle of our scene. Currently though, this is completely flat. So to give this some thickness, we need to go over to the object data panel, open up the geometry section and turn up the extrude value. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now we need to convert this to an actual mesh, which we can then use for the fluid. I'm gonna right click and then go convert to mesh. Now at the moment, the geometry on our text is very weird. You can see this geometry does not look very good. So let's remesh this so it looks good. Over in the modifier tab, if we click add modifier and add in a remesh, I'll switch it over to the sharp mode and bring up the octree depth to a value of about seven. And then I'll turn off remove disconnected pieces. There we go. Now we have our text back. I'm going to apply this modifier by clicking that drop down menu and applying it. Now if we go into edit mode, the geometry looks much better. Next up, we're going to create the simulation. So to do this quickly, we can go over to object, down to quick effects, and then quick liquid. This will automatically add a domain for us, but it's way too big and it's not in the right position. I'm going to press S and Z, scale this down, and drag it upwards. And I want to make sure it's right on the bottom of the text right about there. Over in the domain settings, we're going to set the resolution of this up to 256. This resolution is pretty high and you don't really need to do this much. You can probably get away with 160. I think 256 though looks pretty good. Underneath that, we're gonna scroll down over to the cache setting and set the end frame to 180. And I'm also gonna switch this over to the all option so it will bake everything all at once. Also turn on the mesh, open up this panel and bring the upres factor down to one. Since we have a very high resolution up here, we don't need to up-res the mesh to two. One will be perfectly fine. Another thing we're gonna do is open up the field weights and turn off gravity. The reason we're turning off gravity is because we're gonna use a wind force field to push the fluid down. Basically how this works is we're going to push the fluid down, then in the video sequence editor, we're going to reverse the footage so it looks like the fluid is actually morphing up into text. If gravity is turned up to one, the fluid will actually crash down and go up the side of the domain. If we reverse this footage, you can totally tell it's, it's played backwards. So with gravity off and the wind pushing it down, it's not going to splash up along the sides. I'm going to add in a force field, so press shift A, add in a force field, and then a wind force field right here. We'll rotate this downward so it's pointing down towards the domain. And then over in the physics panel, we're going to set the flow up to five so it goes a lot slower. And we're also going to animate this. Since we're playing this in reverse, we want a couple of extra frames for the text to actually be displayed. So right about frame 40, I want this to start going down. I'm gonna set the strength of this to zero and then add in a keyframe by clicking that button on the side. Go to the next frame, frame 41, set the strength up to 1.5 and then add in another keyframe. And now that we've done that, we are ready to bake. I'm going to select my domain and then go over to the cache setting over in the bottom right here. Save my project just in case this crashes. I'm also gonna turn on is resumable just in case I want to stop the bake. Then I will click bake all. If for some reason your fluid looks like this, that is because the wind force field has a flow of five. For some reason, if I bring it down to four, it fixes that. So make sure if you're having this issue where it fills out the entire domain, switch the flow to four and that should work. The simulation has finished baking and here is our result. So you can see the fluid is staying there until frame 40 and then it falls straight down just like that and it does not splash up along the sides of the domain. That looks pretty good. So now let's set an end frame of 180 in the timeline and then we are ready to set up our materials and lighting. All right, I have set up a quick scene over in the material. I have a blue color with a slight metallic and zero roughness. The ground has a value of 0.1 for the roughness and a white color. 
The lighting, of course, is just a point lamp with a very large size, so it's soft on the shadows. So how this is going to look is if we skip all the way to the end and then drag our timeline this way, it's going to morph into the text going backwards, as you can see here. We are ready to render, so I'm going to go over to the Render tab and set an output of where I want this to go. Once you have found the folder that you want, you can click Accept and then switch this over to a movie file of your choice. Underneath the encoding, I'm going to set this to high quality and then set the container to MP4. I'm going to save my project once again, then go over to Render and then click on Render Animation. Once this is finished rendering, we will go into the video sequence editor and reverse the footage. The render is done, now if we exit out of this window, we can go over to the video sequence editor. To do that, click on this plus sign, go down to video editing, and then video editing. This will bring you to a new panel, and we can go ahead and skip to the beginning of the timeline, add, movie, and then navigate to where your movie file is, select it, and then go add movie strip. Currently, it's playing in the right direction, so we need to reverse the footage. So to do this, over in the properties panel, you can press N to bring that up, Go underneath the video tab and then click on reverse frames. Now it is playing in reverse. If we play this now, you can see if I skip ahead through the timeline a little bit, it plays in reverse and the fluid comes up and morphs into the text. There we go. So now all we have to do is render this out once again. I'm going to skip to the beginning of the timeline, go over to my output and make sure you set a different name for the file or it will overwrite the one that's already here. So click on this button here, then I will just type in reverse, just like this, accept, and then we can render this out and it won't overwrite the one that's already there. I'm gonna save my project once again, go over to render, and then click on render animation. So there you go, that is how you morph fluid into any object. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials in the future. If you have suggestions for other tutorials you would like me to create, leave a comment down below. That's going to be it. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.